the undisputed king of video games, known to some as Super Mario and others as Mario Mario. Whatever the case may be, this iconic Italian plumber with a red cap has appeared in more video games than any other character in history. Being a worldwide icon, Mario is best known as being a princess saving plumber. However, looking over the many decades in which this mustached man has been active, reveals that his resume is actually quite long and expansive. In fact, it might be harder to find a field of work in which Mario hasn't dabbled in one way or another. Today, we're going to be ranking all of Mario's occupations from worst to best based on the proficiency the man brings to the table in each one. I'm Kyle with 1UP Binge, and these are the Yelp reviews for Mario's jobs worst to best. So let's start out by establishing some ground rules. Mario is quite an athlete and has competed in many sports throughout the years. For the sake of this list, we'll be narrowing them down to the sports which are the focal point of specific games. For example, we'll be counting golf and basketball as careers, since Mario has games based entirely around those sports. However, we won't be counting hockey or volleyball as those only exist as sub-games in Mario Party and Mario Sports Mix. The second ground rule is that we'll only be counting continuity based off his roles in the games, and not outside sources like manga or cartoons. So sorry Captain Lou Albano, that means your wrestling career is disqualified. And lastly, we'll be doing something a bit different today. We're introducing Yelp reviews to the Mushroom Kingdom and giving Mario a Power Star rating from 1 to 5 for each one of his services. 1 star representing his worst performances and 5 stars representing his best. With all that established, let's go into our list starting with Mario's less favorable positions. These are his 1 star ratings. At the very bottom of the list, we have Mario's short-lived career as an animal trainer. This might be a surprise since Mario seems to get along really well with Yoshi, teaming up with the prehistoric steed in many adventures. However, if you dig deeper, you might find Mario partook in a role which could have landed him in hot water with Peta, or rather landed him in even more hot water with Peta than he already has. Not only does Mario punch Yoshi in the back of the head in Super Mario World to get the dinosaur to extend its tongue, his treatment of primates is arguably even worse. It's somewhat known that after the events of Donkey Kong, Mario partook in one of his few villainous roles when he captured the big ape in Donkey Kong Jr. What's less known is that Mario also forced the ape to perform in a dangerous circus act in the Game & Watch game Donkey Kong Circus. In this game, Donkey Kong balances himself on a barrel and must juggle pineapples in the air while avoiding fireballs. If the gorilla accidentally comes in contact with one of the flames, Mario will laugh at DK while he cries out in pain. We know they have a rivalry, but this is quite the vindictive act for the usually lovable Mario, who normally is so forgiving that he invites his enemies to play sports with him. Given this game has never seen a re-release, we're willing to bet Nintendo feels the same way and this circus will not be open for business again anytime soon. Sticking with his Game & Watch roles, next we'll take a look at Mario's role as a marine biologist. In the game Octopus, Mario travels out to sea and confronts a giant kraken-sized octopus under the waves. Seeing treasures behind it, Mario dives down and attempts to grab the gold while avoiding the tentacles of the octopus. This is an expedition that even the most experienced wildlife professionals would have deemed too dangerous to attempt. It's quite a departure to see Mario so fixated on coins that he would put himself in so much danger, especially since there's coins and blocks all over the kingdom. Of course Wario would do something like this, but not Mario. This is definitely a case where Mario is in this more for the money, and I'm sure any sensible marine biologist would have told him to think twice about the dive. Considering Mario has fought many squids since then, we're willing to bet the trauma inflicted by this journey has stuck with him over the years. Next, we get to Mario's very first occupation, a carpenter. Back when he was known as Jumpman, Mario had a pretty stable job doing carpentry before his girlfriend Pauline was captured by a giant ape. While we don't see Mario actually performing his job in this game, we're going to assume that these shady structures that Donkey Kong is climbing were constructed by Mario himself. In the first level, the structure is so loose that it is literally broken to pieces by Donkey Kong's stumps. In the last level, Mario can destroy his own creation by taking out a few screws in the floor of each story of the building. Also, while we don't see Mario do his job, 
We do see how he uses his hammers, which involves flailing around like a madman pounding down barrels and flames. Try taking a hammer to a rolling barrel or a raging fire and see how well that works out in reality. Considering this career was short-lived, we're willing to bet Mario was fired from his carpentry job and went to look for work elsewhere. Looking at the buildings and his use of a hammer, we imagine this decision was made in good faith. Long before Universal Studios opted to open up a Nintendo division at their iconic theme park, Mario himself tried out for a role as a theme park operator in Mario vs. Donkey Kong Miniland Mayhem. However, the showrunners over at Nintendo Land do a much better job at maintaining their park than their iconic mascot ever did. After Donkey Kong captures Pauline yet again, Mario rides after him on a really slow train which traverses to different areas of Miniland. Traveling to these areas reveals that Mario undoubtedly opened his park without doing proper safety inspections as many of these areas are unfinished at best. Mario himself won't even enter the levels, instead opting to use his wind-up toys to do the job for him. As much shade as we can throw on the pin a park director in Super Mario Sunshine for operating clearly dangerous rides, we can at least chalk his mistakes up to being oblivious rather than malicious intent. When Mario, as the theme park operator, doesn't even want to risk his life on his own rides, we can conclude he doesn't put the safety of his customers at the forefront of his mind. When it comes to Mario's diet, more often than not, he's seen eating pre-made pasta dishes and wild mushrooms he finds throughout his adventures. Based on his titular role in the Game & Watch game, Chef, we can surely see why Mario doesn't cook meals for himself. In this game, Mario and Luigi are seen chopping up food to prepare for a hungry Yoshi at the bottom of the screen. Instead of taking the time to fry the food themselves, Mario and Luigi nonchalantly toss the food over their shoulders for Peach to fry in a pan. While we're not entirely sure if this qualifies as a health code violation, this does cause a lot of stress for the princess who must juggle the food in the air before it reaches the mouth of Yoshi below. For once, Peach is the one seen doing all the work, while the Mario brothers are the ones causing problems for her. It's no wonder why the princess opted to beat the iconic duo with her frying pan in the Smash Bros series for revenge for putting her in that position. Rounding out our one-star reviews, we see Mario in one of his most iconic reoccurring roles, a doctor. We're not sure what medical certifications it takes to be a doctor in the Mushroom Kingdom, but we're glad the same standards don't mirror our rules in the real world. In this game, Dr. Mario is portrayed as a pill pusher whose only idea to treat illness is to line up four colored pills to take care of a virus. Beating level 20 on the NES version of Dr. Mario reveals that the viruses are in fact space aliens who board their mothership after being thwarted by the shady doctor. If this interpretation is canon, does that mean Mario was using his pills to get the viruses to overdose rather than treat their actual illnesses? We wouldn't be surprised if their home planet has an opioid epidemic stemming from their visits to the Mushroom Kingdom. We're calling malpractice. That about does it for our one-star Yelp reviews. Now we'll take a look at Mario's two-star ratings. Mamma mia! These are jobs which Mario performs less than average, but are not quite as offensive as his first outings. Let's start with Mario's position as a cement factory worker in his Game & Watch game. Since the title of this game is Mario's Cement Factory, we're also assuming he's the owner and operator of the business in question. Due to either pride or a lack of funding, Mario is apparently the only hired hand working to load up the cement trucks. This causes a lot of stress for him, as he frantically runs around operating four machines at the same time. If that wasn't enough, Mario will also badly injure himself if he falls off a platform or stays on one too long and hits the ceiling. We can commend Mario for not being lazy in this position, but something tells us he should have gotten some help in order to run the factory smoother. The most surprising role in his repertoire, Mario was apparently drafted at one point to be a soldier in the Vietnam War. In the Game & Watch game, Mario's Bombs Away, Mario is seen carrying a bomb to be lit and thrown up into a tree at his enemies. Some days, you just can't get rid of a bomb, and if Mario's explosive is lit prematurely, he'll panic and take it back to his base, blowing himself up along with his allies. To be fair, Mario does seem more efficient than many of his fellow soldiers as one of them casually smokes cigars while all this mayhem is taking place. That said, considering Mario endangers the lives of his fellow men under distress, we can't consider him to be the most effective troop either. We wouldn't be surprised if under his general positive exterior, Mario is hiding some deep-seated trauma and shell shock. From warfare to alcohol, the next job we're looking at is Mario's role as a brewery worker in the Mario Bros. Game & Watch game. 
We're giving this position a slight edge over his role as a cement factory worker, as at least with this game, he enlists his brother Luigi to help him out. With that said, the brewery is still significantly understaffed, as the brothers frantically race from level to level, attempting to catch the boxes before they fall. Once again, this does demonstrate a lack of laziness amongst the brothers, but they're biting off way more than they can chew. If Mario or Luigi drops a case of alcohol, their boss will angrily yell at them for their mistake. If this happens three times, the game ends and Mario and Luigi are presumably let go from their jobs. Given the pressure and anxiety this must have created for the duo, this decision is probably a blessing in disguise. Moving on to a much more advanced role, let's look at Mario's position as a spaceship pilot in the Game Boy game Alleyway. This launch game title for the system is essentially a breakout clone where the player moves a paddle from left to right in order to juggle a ball from falling into a pit. Looking at the game's box art, we can see that the man piloting the paddle is none other than Mario himself. Mario does show a lot of accuracy in being able to position the paddle correctly and juggle up to five balls simultaneously at certain points in the game. However, the reason that this only gets two stars in our rating is because if you look closely at the box art, you can see Mario has an entire control panel at his disposal, which he never actually uses aside from the levers. We can only imagine what potential this bizarre paddle ship truly has since Mario only seems to be able to move it from left to right. Mario operates a spaceship again in Super Mario Galaxy 2, but once more, he only seems to be able to steer it in a linear direction. Overall, he's not a terrible pilot, but he seems to squander the more advanced potential of the spacecrafts he controls. Rounding out our two-star reviews, we have Mario's role as a demolition man. In the NES and arcade game Wrecking Crew, Mario is seen once again with a hammer, this time using it at his disposal in order to destroy buildings. While doing this, Mario also has to avoid enemies and his rival crewmen form its spike. Mario can fail at his task from destroying ladders prematurely, preventing him from reaching higher levels. Why Mario doesn't take care of this using a wrecking ball is beyond us. Mario can also blow up bombs using his hammer, which doesn't seem like the brightest move to us, but it can get the job done faster. Even Luigi seems ashamed to be partaking in these tasks, disguising himself in a purple uniform in the NES game. Mario and Luigi later return to their roles in Wrecking Crew 98, but this release never saw its way out of Japan. We're willing to bet this occupation doesn't rank among the brothers' proudest moments. With his subpar roles taken care of, let's take a look at the average three-star Yelp ratings for Mario's jobs. Okey -dokey. These are the roles in which Mario is somewhat efficient, but absolutely has room to improve himself. Starting this section off, we look at one of Mario's more unexpected and oft-forgotten occupations, that being a rifleman. As seen in Yoshi's Safari, Mario drops his usual shtick of jumping on enemies in favor of just straight up gunning them down with a high-powered rifle. The in-game gun which Mario dons looks quite similar to that of the Super Scope, which the player must equip in order to play Yoshi's Safari. The gun has limited power, but can be depleted from firing too rapidly. If he's not careful, Mario can also accidentally shoot his dinosaur pal in the back of the head, which causes Yoshi to become dizzy. Mario's use of firearms does come in handy in later games where he uses guns to take care of the rabbits, which invade his homeland. Overall, Mario does show some skill with weaponry, but could have used a lot more practice at the shooting range before embarking on this adventure. Next up is Mario's most common role, which is that of a royal bodyguard. After saving his girlfriend Pauline from a deranged gorilla, Mario travels to the Mushroom Kingdom and becomes the sworn protector of Princess Peach. Occasionally, Mario will even travel to other kingdoms and save their royal lineage from capture, like in Super Mario Land when he saves Princess Daisy and her kingdom. Mario clearly goes through a lot for these girls and does so with seemingly minimal rewards. While this is commendable, the reason we're giving Mario three stars for this position is because he doesn't do a very good job of actually preventing these incidents from happening in the first place. After Bowser terrorizes the Mushroom Kingdom more times than we can count, you would think Mario would try to beef up their security, or at least try some preventative measure to stop the frequency of these incidents in occurring. We can put some blame on Peach herself, since Daisy was only captured once and must have taken the right precautions afterwards. However, since Mario is essentially the Mushroom Kingdom's defense, we just feel like it would be a lot smarter to have some sort of proactive security measure in place. Another one of Mario's defining roles, we're ranking his career as a go-kart driver next. Ever since the Super Nintendo days, Mario, along with his friends and enemies, have spent an exuberant amount of time racing laps across different lands. 
Rather than keep it a boring run-of-the-mill kart race, Mario decided to spice things up by introducing hazardous items that the racers can throw at each other in order to slow them down. If that wasn't enough, the courses which Mario approves for his races often have hazards of their own, which range from lava to quicksand to even other traffic. We can only imagine the stress it must cause to be driving around in your car or bus, only to have a bunch of kart racers smash into your vehicle and toss dangerous items onto the street. Mario's kart racing game is definitely fun and provides a lot of entertainment for his friends, and even his enemies. But the lack of safety precautions makes us wonder how busy the local hospitals in the Mushroom Kingdom are after a Grand Prix. In Japan, Mario is much more than a racer of go-karts, as he also took a brief career as a Formula One racer on the Famicom. In the game's Famicom Grand Prix 1 and 2, which both predate the Mario Kart series, Mario and Luigi can be found riding Formula One cars around different racetracks. While this career obviously lasted for a much shorter time period than his kart racing career, we're giving it a slight edge since, ironically, racing Formula One cars seems to be a lot less dangerous than racing go-karts, due to the lack of hazards and items. Granted, the players can still collide with other vehicles on the track in an attempt to spin them out, but that's not quite on par with throwing a bomb on the track to blow up your opponent. One of Mario's lesser-known vehicular ventures, his short career as a stunt bike racer is up next. An exclusive on Nintendo's shortly-lived Satellaview service in Japan, Excite Bike Bun Bun Mario Battle saw the iconic Mario characters performing stunts on motorcycles. Released in four installments, this game featured gameplay very similar to the original Excite Bike, wherein the player must race to the end of the track while avoiding obstacles and jumping off ramps. The characters can also wipe out at certain points of the race, causing them to have to get back to their designated bikes. Once again, this task doesn't seem like the safest method, as at least the original Excite Bike racers wore protective helmets and gear which Mario and his friends decide to ignore for their races. Then again, this still seems safer than ramming into each other or throwing items during races in order to handicap your opponents. Mario himself obviously has a nostalgia for these races, later introducing bikes, and an Excite Bike course into the later Mario Kart games. We're glad that it brings him joy, and no one seems to have suffered fatal injuries while doing tricks on their motorbikes. Another short career that Mario had was as a boxing referee in the NES game Punch-Out, or Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, depending on which version you're playing. In this game, Mario, for the most part, sticks to the sidelines, only revealing himself when either Little Mac or one of his opponents is knocked down. Mario will declare KO and count to 10, or TKO if one of the boxers is knocked down three times in one match. While Mario seems pretty efficient as a referee, sometimes the opponents to Little Mac use pretty crazy moves which are questionable at best in the spirit of boxing. Since Mario never returned to this job, it seems it wasn't the most fruitful position for him to undertake. In Kirby Superstar, Mario, along with a few of his mutuals, can be seen in the crowd watching the match between Kirby and King Dedede from afar, showing he has no interest in returning to be the judge of matches and would rather spectate. One role that Mario has kept up with consistently over the years is his job as a party organizer. Ever since the Nintendo 64, Mario has thrown some of the most iconic parties in video game history, in which he gladly invites all of his friends and enemies to partake. These parties see the characters traveling across the board using a dice roll and partaking in a plethora of minigames to earn money and buy stars. We can see that Mario is not only the Mushroom Kingdom's savior, but also knows how to throw the best parties in town. While we can definitely say Mario's parties rank among some of the most memorable moments in multiplayer gaming, we're only giving him three stars because we feel as the parties went on, Mario's events eventually became a little stale. Mario Party 9 and 10 are the worst offenders featuring ridiculous modes and gameplay mechanics not found in his earlier outings. While Mario has since returned to his party roots and gone back to throwing some really cool parties on the Switch, we do think the excess is a bit much. Moderation is key and Mario seems to have learned that lesson the hard way. Rounding out our three-star reviews is Mario's career as a soccer player. Having performed in many sports over the years, it was only a matter of time until Mario and his friends found their way onto a soccer field. 
In this game, soccer has much more of a violent edge, as the players can perform various power moves which can cause lots of high intense moments on the field. Once again, this doesn't seem like the safest way to play the sport, especially since it also incorporates items for the players to throw, and fences which will electrocute anyone who comes in contact with them. Since he's only played this sport twice in the Mario Strikers series, we think the damage it caused the players was too much for them to handle, even if it does make for an interesting game of soccer. Now we get to Mario's jobs that earned 4 star Yelp reviews. These are roles in which Mario definitely performs above average, but there is still a little room for improvement. Starting this section off, we take a look at Mario's noble role in becoming a teacher. While it's true that Mario has had many educational games over the years, most of which were quite bad, the only game with the teacher position in the title is Mario Teaches Typing for the PC. In this game, Mario helps the player increase their words per minute speed as he embarks on the adventure involving pressing whatever letter on the keyboard that pops up on screen. Out of all of Mario's educational outings, this one seems to be the most fun and effective at actually teaching the player something useful. However, we're putting this at the bottom of our 4 star rankings because it doesn't quite make up for Mario's monotonous failures in his other educational outings. Moving on to more sports, we have to take a look at Mario's career as a baseball player. Inviting every character in the Mushroom Kingdom, the Mario Baseball series mostly plays out like regular baseball matches with a few surprises here and there. The courses are often filled with obstacles which aren't exactly hazardous for the most part but do sometimes cause the ball to bounce in weird directions. The only reason why this ranks a little lower is because many of the players exhibit moves which we feel would be disqualifying in most other cases. I mean, Donkey Kong literally uses a boxing glove instead of a bat and no one feels this is just cause for blowing the whistle. Also, we're not sure how a Goomba can bat so well without the use of, you know, arms. Either way, Mario at least shows great passion for the American pastime, which is on full display in this series. Now we finally get to the role Mario is most well known for, his occupation as a plumber. Despite being his most iconic role, Mario ironically has done less plumbing in his series than any other job as we never see him with a plunger or do much plumbing work. Two of the only instances we can think of are in Super Mario 3D World and Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, which see the brothers actually repairing pipes at certain points in the game. While they get the job done in those games effectively, we can at least see in a broader scale that Mario & Luigi know their way around pipes as they often use them to travel to different areas throughout their adventures. We're willing to bet their notoriety in this field is well earned, but because of how infrequently we see them doing actual plumbing work, we couldn't give them 5 stars. On top of Nintendo making Mario their top priority for merchandise, Mario himself also takes joy in selling his image when he takes on a career as a toy manufacturer. In the Mario vs Donkey Kong games, Mario creates a toy line based on his own likeness known as Mini Marios, which he sells to the public. Not only are the toys a big hit, but they're also very efficient as they're used to solve puzzles and complete levels throughout the series. While the abilities of the toys are very admirable, we're docking a couple points since it seems a bit egotistical to create a brand of toys solely based on your own image. Then again, the Mushroom Kingdom residents and even Donkey Kong himself seem to really adore them so it was clearly a successful marketing strategy. While Mario shows a strong interest in sports, he's not always the one on the playing field as shown in his career as a tennis umpire. First taking on this role in tennis for the NES, Mario at this point wasn't the active athlete he came to be and instead watched from his seat counting the points for the players. While not the most difficult job, he continued this task in Game Boy Tennis and even Mario Tennis on the Nintendo 64. That latter one is a bit odd because Mario can be seen both on the court and as the umpire at the same time. But we can't forget about the time Mario took a position as a basketball player. While he did many variations of the sport in the Mario Party games, the first time this position was placed at the forefront of a game was in the GameCube version of NBA Street version 3. In this game, Mario, along with Luigi and Peach, squared off against actual NBA athletes. Because of his high jumping abilities, Mario seems like a shoe in for being a great basketball player. If it was only for this game, we would have chalked up Mario's inclusion as more of a guest role than an actual occupation. However, Mario once again performed the sport in Mario Hoops 3 on 3, where he squared off against characters in the Final Fantasy series. It may not be his go-to sport, but he has a history of playing it quite competitively. 
Rounding out our four-star reviews, we have Mario's career as an artist. Mario most famously took up this role in Mario Paint, where he allowed the players to use a multitude of different programs in order to become more familiar with the use of a mouse. He even encourages creating original paintings in the drawing mode and becoming a musical artist with the music composition tool. If you were a Japanese player and were one of the few people who actually owned a Nintendo 64DD, you'd find that his artist career continued in a series of games known as Mario Artist. These four games, known as Paint Studio, Talent Studio, Polygon Studio, and Communication Kit, featured various other modes which were either expanded upon or absent from the original Mario Paint game. While the rarity of these games don't make them among Mario's most well-known roles, we would definitely be happy to see Mario return to his art studio somewhere down the line. That caps our four-star Yelp reviews, so let's finally take a look at the occupations which earn Mario the full five stars. So long, These are the areas in which our iconic hero really shines at performing his duties. Starting this section off, we have one of Mario's most iconic sports roles as a tennis player. After donning the task of being an umpire in a few tennis games, Mario finally took to the court itself on the Virtual Boy with Mario Tennis. While this game was basically a normal tennis game featuring Mario characters, eventually his tennis outings became deeper and more intricate starting with Mario Tennis on the Nintendo 64. Eventually, the series introduced wacky courts and items along with power moves which spiced up the series a lot more. While the use of some moves could be seen as disqualifying, the fact that they don't really put the players in much harm lets us approve them from any strict safety regulations. Mario's handheld tennis outings became even more intricate, including RPG storylines for the player to complete. While not the most conventional tennis matches, Mario at least knows how to put on a fun game and one heck of a show for the spectators. Moving on to probably Mario's favorite sport given how often he plays it, Mario's career as a golfer is up next. Mario first started golfing way back on the NES game Golf and continued his career on the Famicom and Game Boy. Eventually, he started inviting his friends to participate with him in Mario Golf on the Nintendo 64, spawning a career of many more games in the Mario Golf series. Much like tennis, Mario can either play this game traditionally or with wacky course conditions as found in the late games in the series. Mario Golf Super Rush is the strangest variation yet, with the players running across the course and fighting each other in between shots. Whatever the case may be, this is clearly the sport which Mario is the most passionate about which is why it places so high on our list. Moving on to the bronze medal for Mario's best occupation. We see him redeem his lackluster role as a carpenter when he becomes an architect in the Mario Maker series. Finally proactive in creating interesting levels and structures, Mario is seen actively building structures for him and his brother, along with many other characters, to play around with. The amount of variety these games give in the level creation is truly commendable and shows that Mario has a lot of tools at his disposal which can be used to their greatest ability. In the story mode of Super Mario Maker 2, it's seen that Mario is actually working under Toadette and getting the equipment back to rebuild Peach's castle. The only reason Mario's architect career doesn't get the silver medal is due to the inability to share courses online in the 3DS Super Mario Maker game. This was such a poor decision that we had to dock at a point, but the career still lands in the top three. For our silver medal for Mario's best occupation, we finally get to Mario's career as an arena fighter. Most notably demonstrated in the Super Smash Bros. series, Mario can clearly hold his own in a fight as he battles with opponents from all the different Nintendo series. Mario enters these battles with his bare hands, which is commendable given the fact his opponents often use swords, guns, or other weapons to fight against him. Mario has been a champion of Smash Bros. from the very beginning, appearing in every Smash game up to present day. In Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, we also see him work up the ranks in the Glitz Pit and achieving the champion belt by the end of the third chapter in the game. Even as an underdog, Mario is an unstoppable force when he enters a fighting ring, even up against many powerful opponents. But finally, beating out all the other careers that Mario has taken on, our gold medal has to go to Mario's career as an Olympian. This may seem like an odd choice, but hear us out. Throughout the years, Mario and his friends have demonstrated that they are quite proficient in playing many sports such as golf, tennis, basketball, soccer, and more. Ultimately, we feel Mario and friends' athletic abilities are best demonstrated in the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics game series. 
Most Olympians train for years and years in order to be able to participate in any Olympic sport. Not only has Mario done this with his long line of sports titles, and not only does he participate in one Olympic event, he participates in every Olympic event, whether it's the Summer Olympics or Winter Olympics. Taking place in London, Rio, or Tokyo, Mario, Sonic, and all of their friends always show up, try their best, and partake in every single sport they can. Their dedication to these events and vast skill set in participating in all of them makes this an easy choice for Mario's best 5-star career. But let us know in the comments section which of Mario's many careers is your personal favorite. And be sure to hit that notification bell and binge more of our Nintendo videos. Thanks for watching.